Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It is so good to be with you all this morning. Um, in theme, I'm very thankful to be here, and God has blessed me through all of you. Uh, today, we're going to be spending a little bit of time sort of wetting our appetizer, wetting our lips for, for the Advent season. The, today's sermon will be a, a little prelude to that, and we'll, we'll be really thinking and, and meditating on what, what does Emmanuel mean? What does it mean that, that Jesus is our Emmanuel? So we see in Matthew, actually first, before we go on, let me pray. Let me pray for us. Lord Jesus, we come before you so thankful. We thank you for um, the time we, we had to pause and together, collectively, be thankful to you for all the ways that you have blessed us. Lord, we um, are so amazed by you. Father, I, I pray that um, by your spirit, it would be your message that is heard today and, and not my own, that um, you would speak through me and that, and that we would each hear, have ears to hear what it is that you would have to say to us. We thank you and praise you, Lord. Amen. 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 All right. So as we think about exploring what Emmanuel means, we see in Matthew 1, verses 22 to 23, it says, All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. And so Matthew is identifying Jesus as Emmanuel as he begins to tell the story of the conception and, and birth of, a, of Jesus. And so this is one of the first names that Jesus is given in the, the book of Matthew, Matthew's account of, of Jesus. And we see here that he says, all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. So Jesus is the fulfillment of what Emmanuel means. He is the fullness of what Emmanuel means. And it says here that in the Hebrew, Emmanuel means God with us. The first time that, that this was spoken of by the prophet is in Isaiah 7. And so that's, that's what Matthew is referring to when he, when he uh, points to that, that Jesus is the fulfillment of what the Lord spoke through the prophet. He's, he's speaking back into Israel's history to the prophet Isaiah when, when he spoke of one who would be born and, and who would be called Emmanuel, God with us. And, and the concept of Emmanuel is something that is, is so striking to me. And I think that there is um, importance to it. If it's one of the first names, one of the first identifiers that Matthew gives to him. And he says that he, Jesus is the fulfillment of this. And so I, I am just so in awe of who God is when I think of him as Emmanuel. In... A book called When Christ Comes and Comes Again by um, Thomas F. Torrance, he has a whole chapter on Emmanuel, what Emmanuel means, what it means that God is with us. And so he breaks that down into five different components. These are not the only components. What it means for, for God to be with us is so big and so vast and so beyond our imagination. But this chapter and reading through what C.F. Torrance had to say really helped me to allow God to take me deeper into an understanding of, of who he is and what it means that, that Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. So if we turn to the next slide, we see that um, first, Emmanuel means that, that God gave himself to us. God with us is God giving himself to us. That it, it was upon his own initiative. He was the one that came to be with us. It wasn't something that we could have done. It's not something that um, we really would have even known to, to ask for in the way that it happened. But, but it was his, he is, is a gift to us of his own accord, of his own will. And he gives himself to us wholly in Jesus Christ. And, and so God with us, the sense of Emmanuel, means that that. God takes this initiative towards us, right? In Christ, we have this sense of, of 
God's heart and action towards man. And we also um, see in Christ, in, in the meaning of God with us, that, that he became one of us. So not only is he with us and given, giving himself to us, but he's one of us. He didn't come as some, you know, cloud or little bubble of light. He came as a human, fully God and fully man. And, and Torres describes it in his book, he is flesh of our flesh and bone of our bone. He has come as one of us. That's what it means, Emmanuel, God with us. And so he understands the human experience. He is close with us in that way. Not only that, but he identifies with us. He, he becomes one of us in, in a way to identify with us in such a decided way. It's, it's almost like the statement, well, I, I'm one of you. I'm one of you now. So he becomes one with us, one of us, and shares his life with us. And so God with us means God, God becoming one of us, and we see that in the life of Christ. We also see and, and in his life um, and in the scriptures this sense of Emmanuel, God with us, as God with us to the depths. So God with us to the depths of all the joys, all the wonderful things in life, but also God with us to the depths of our sinfulness, of our brokenness. He stepped into a broken world. He stepped into a humanity that um, was messed up. We had messed ourselves up. We were spiraling downwards, so, so to say, and he stepped into that. So he's with us to the depths. There's no place that he will not go to be with us. The, the most evil, the most broken parts of our humanity, he is with us even there, even there. We also see that that God with us means God for us. He's, he's in our corner, so to say. And so it's not just that he came to be with us and he became one of us, you know, even to the depths, but is you know, sort of ambivalent about how things turn out. No, he's for us, he's rooting for us. He went to those depths to see us victorious in him, to see us free, to he has our and is accomplishing for us, the best for us, right? So it's not that he's just with us, but he really wants what is truly best for us, which is himself. And so he was for us in that, in that way, and always fighting for us and on our side and never letting us go, even when he follows us to the depths of our own sin and despair and hopelessness. And then we explore the fact that Emmanuel, God with us, also means God on behalf of us. So Jesus in his life, in coming to be with us, and becoming one of us, takes our place and does what we cannot do. Um, everything that we could not do, he fulfills. And he does on behalf of us. And, and so in that way, in being fully God and fully man, he's not only that action of God towards humanity, right? God giving himself to us. But he's the action of humanity to God. Humanity's response to God. And he does that on behalf of us. So he's sort of fulfilling both of, both of those ways. And, and that's an aspect of what it means that he's with us. He's doing things on behalf of us. All of the things that we could not do. All of the things that we do not know to do, or how to do, or we're not even imagine to do. He does that for us and, and responds to God for us. And so these, these are five ways that Torrance breaks down in, in his book, which I would highly recommend, um, what, what it means that God is with us. And, and as we really let that sink in, that Emmanuel, God with us, Jesus fulfilling the prophecy of Emmanuel means that, that he has given himself to us, that he has become one of us, that he follows us even to the depths, into the depths of all that our humanity means, both good and bad, that he is for us and in our corner, 
and that he lives his life on behalf of us, wow. There's not even words as we begin to let God take us to the depths of what that means, that he's Emmanuel, and that this is one of the first ways that he is identified to the people. He is with us and for us and one of us to the depths of our being. This is who our Jesus is. And as we read through the scriptures, we realize that this has always been God's heart. I mean, we see in Genesis, God walked with his people, right? We see Adam and Eve heard, heard God walking in the garden towards them, and they were scared. And so we, a lot of the times when we're reading that account, we're um, you know, thinking about Adam and Eve's reactions or, or how God responds to them. But sometimes we gloss over the fact that God was just amongst his people in the garden. He was with them. So from the very beginning, that was his heart to be with his people. Throughout the Old Testament and the account of God with, with Israel, we see him continually promising his presence to his people. Continually promising his presence and showing up with his people. And in Deuteronomy 31, that's when God first says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And then we're reminded of that in Hebrews. But that was from the very beginning. That, that was a day one kind of promise that, that Moses uh, recounts in Deuteronomy. That God told his people, I will never leave you or forsake you. So this has always been God's heart. And it has come to complete fulfillment in Jesus, who is our Emmanuel. Who is our Emmanuel. And we know that this is true. We know this to be true, not only in the great times, but in the chaotic times, in the difficult times, in the times that seem without hope. In Isaiah, when we first hear God speak through the prophet Isaiah of Emmanuel, of God with his people in that way, that happens in the context of, of chaos and hopelessness. It happened in the context of wartime. And this, this is the context in which God talks about God with us, Emmanuel. And again, when, when Jesus comes in the, in the flesh, when Matthew refers to him as Emmanuel, that was not a time of peace either. That was a time of chaos. It was a time of hopelessness for his people. And so we see that, that this is true, not just in those great times when we're happy and we're like, yeah, God is with us, this is, this is great, we feel victorious, but in times of, of <coughs> chaos and, and hopelessness. And so to me, as I let God bring me into a deeper understanding of what that means, that he is with us completely and fully in Christ, it brings profound hope. Hope that I don't even understand, really. Um, it brings hopes in ways that I couldn't ever imagine on my own, uh, but only, only with the guidance of, of the Spirit and, and the revealing of God to me in Jesus. And, and so it brings hope to me for, for our world, for our communities, for us each individually in our in our own personal journeys, um, and and as I, I think about that, when when I see brokenness and pain around me, there, and I remember Emmanuel. And I remember Emmanuel. It changes. It changes everything. Um, so. I think one of the first times that God really, I was just really striped, striped? <laughs> when he really struck me with this concept of Emmanuel in such a deep and profound way um, was as I thought about the last night that I had with my mother before she passed. Um, that night we were at home and we ended up having to 
call an ambulance and have her rushed to the hospital. So I had been with her, and I had been sitting with her, but after I called the ambulance, um, this, this chaotic scene sort of started to unravel. Something like three ambulances showed up, and, and like six or seven big guys traipsed into the house, and you know, one was talking to my mother's nurse, and, and two were talking to my mom and taking vitals, and another was asking me for, for paperwork. And, and it ca chaos, Liter my, my mind was in all these different places. This chaos stepped into that moment in that life um, in, in my home. And so I am looking for the paperwork as they're preparing to take her into the ambulance. And, and my mother had so much severe anxiety. And so um, if I interpreted that scene as chaotic, I, the way that she would have interpreted that scene is exponentially more chaotic, exponentially more anxiety provoking and um, fearsome. And, and because the parent, one of the paramedics had asked, asked me for her medical paperwork, I was looking for it. I was looking for it as they put her in the chair to take her out, and, and I was still trying to find it as they took her out the front door and, and got her settled in the ambulance. Um, and by the time I got to the hospital with her, she was already so tired that she couldn't even speak. And then soon after that, she was sedated. And, and so afterwards, processing and reflecting on that moment was so difficult for me because this thought kept recurring that in those last moments really of, of my mom's conscious life she must have been so afraid and so full of anxiety and where was I? I was looking for paperwork. I was looking for paperwork as these strangers traped through my house and settled my mom into an ambulance. I was looking for paperwork and, and I had this deep regret, and I wish that I could have in that moment just stopped and said, sir, I don't know where the paperwork is. Can I just stand by my mom while you guys settle her in? Can I just be with her? But, but I didn't, and so, so there was one day that I was talking with God about this, and, and I was angry, and I was upset, and, and I just heard him say to me, so truly and so quietly, but maybe I was with her. I was with her. And in that moment, I got a, a glimpse of the depth of what Emmanuel means. In that moment, in that chaotic moment of my mother's life, while she was afraid, while she was full of anxiety, while there was nothing that I could do, well, I couldn't be right next to her. Jesus was with her. Jesus was with her. And, and in that moment, I realized, okay, that's got to be enough. That is enough. That is enough. Because there's something about that moment we, we confront the end of ourselves, right? And somehow when we confront the end of ourselves, Jesus just keeps on going. Because he can do what we can do, and he can be where we can't be. And so in that moment... While I, was, while I was looking for paperwork and, and didn't have the wits about me um, to make a different decision, there was Jesus. There he was for me and my mother. There he was as one of us. There he was on behalf of me, giving himself to us, <coughs> for us in the depths of the hurt of our, of our broken humanity, of the chaos. That is who our Jesus is. So that moment for me was, wow, wow. He, he is all of these things in, in a way that, that is beyond, beyond words. And so there's this profound hope that we find in him with us. Even, even in, in those, those heartbreaking moments of our lives. Um, and, and as we interpret the world around us, it changes, it changes everything. That sort of rewrote how I understood that moment of my life um, and my mother's life. Uh, another mm -hmm. instance in where God sort of just rewrote my understanding and took me to a deeper understanding of Emmanuel was when um, 
I had my hips replaced. So I had my hip replacement surgery after about three months after my mom passed. And so this was this was not um, a, an easy time of my life to begin with. And so I had the surgery and I was in rehab a few days after surgery. And this was at nighttime, so my sister had to go home. She had work the next day. Um, I had my own room because I was at least 50 years younger than every other person in that rehab facility, and I had just gone through a major surgery. Uh, and, and so one night, I just, everything just hit me, right? The death of my mother was fresh. I was in pain. I had just had these hip replacements, which um, is, is also a, a huge life ordeal to process, right? Um, you know, having to have part of my body replaced and so there, there was one night that, that I was just alone in my room and, and I just lost it. I just lost it. And I sat there for 30 minutes or so just sobbing. And I'm a human that does not like to cry. And I just sat there, I was crying and crying because it was one of the loneliest moments that I had felt in my whole life. And, and there was a sense in which I didn't want one of the nurses to hear me to come in because I didn't want to have to explain. I didn't want to have to talk about it. Um, I didn't want people to, to see me in that state. But in another sense, I desperately wanted someone to be able to walk in that door and make everything OK. Mm -hmm. Desperately wanted that. But you know that Jesus was with me in that moment. Mm -hmm. He was with me. I was not alone. I felt alone, but I was not. Mm -hmm. I was not. And even in that moment, he was there. And so we see as we begin to let God show us who he is as Emmanuel, that, that it brings us hope when we see chaos and brokenness and hurting in the world around us. And it brings us hope when we see chaos and brokenness and hurting in our own lives. To, to know and reinterpret those moments as we were not alone. That person was not alone. God is with us. We have our Emmanuel. And so when we allow him to be a manual to us, and we allow him to be a manual in our lives, it, it rewrites the whole narrative of our lives in some way. We, he reinterprets these moments where we felt alone, where we felt hopeless, where we thought that, that there was nothing left for us. He reinterprets it. And he, he says, no, I was there. I was with you. And, and that can change the whole way that we see our lives. And it, it, and it brings us to this deep sense of intimacy with God as well and our relationship with him as, as we begin to see how big he is, that he can know things about us that no one else knows, not even ourselves, that he can be where no one else can be in those moments of desperation and that he can do what no one else can do for us. And so in... In the email that I had sent out to everyone as the, the teaser for this week, I asked the question, what are some of the, some of the moments in your life where you knew and you felt certain that God was with you, but also what are the moments that you felt like he wasn't, or that you felt like he was far away? And one of the prayers that I have for us, especially as we enter the Advent season and think about who Jesus is with us, is that we would take the time and sit with him. And let him retell those moments to us. Let him rewrite our narratives and, and show us that in those moments that he, we felt like he was far off or we felt like no one was in our corner. We felt like we were alone. We, we felt like there was no hope left. That he was there. That he was there. And it'll just flip your whole understanding of your who you are this world, your life, and who Jesus is on its head, and it'll bring you into this, this depth of relationship with him and, and worship and assuredness and a hope that is beyond human comprehension because it wasn't designed by us, it wasn't created by us, but, but it's only because of him. When I think about um, this, I, and, and as, as I think about Emmanuel and what that means, I begin to understand how Paul could speak so boldly as he does in Romans. He says in Romans 31, if God is for us, who can be against us? If he's for us, who can be against us? 
And, and I think he, he could be so bold to say this because he, God revealed to him some of the depths of what it means that God is for us. And so if he really is for us in those ways that he says and really has fulfilled that and is really in our corner, then what can this world do to us? It can break us, yeah. It has for me, and I bet my last dollar that it has for everyone here as well. But it can't destroy us. This world cannot destroy us because God is with us in this way that is so profound beyond our understanding. So what can this world do to us? And then he says in Romans 8, 38 to 39, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Yes! Yes! This is Emmanuel with us. Nothing can separate us. Nothing. Because that is who he is. And, and it's Emmanuel, God being with us, it's not just something that he does, but, but it's who he is. It's who he is. So it's not conditional upon us. That's why nothing can separate it, because what we do can't change who he is. Amen. It can't change who he is. And, and, and I think something that we miss out on when, when Matthew names and identifies <laughs> Jesus as Emmanuel is how meaningful names were to the Jewish people. Names weren't just names. Names identified uh, the essence of that person. And so Emmanuel isn't just what, what Jesus does. Being with us is not just what he does, but it's who he is. Yeah. And so nothing can change that. Nothing can change who he is. So nothing can change who he is with us. Nothing can separate us. And, and even David, God blessed David to see a glimpse of this um, in Psalm 139. And, and he says, David says this, he says, where shall I go from your spirit, or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you're there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, and the light about me be night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is bright as day, for darkness is as light to you. There's nowhere we can go where he is not with us. There is nothing that can happen that can separate us from him. And so our brokenness, our doubts, our lack of understandings, those moments where we lose our temper, those moments where we get lost in our sin, our rebellion from him, our moments of loneliness, our addictions, our ways that we stray, the grudges that we hold, none of these things can separate us because none of these things can change who he is. And so in those moments where we lose it, in those moments when we fail, in those moments where we feel hopeless, that no one is for us, nobody is with us, where we feel lonely, if those things can't separate us from him, then where is he? Right with us, in the midst of that moment in the midst of all of that, that crud and brokenness. This is who he is. It's who he is. And so I want to read something that, that Torrent says as he concludes his chapter on Emmanuel in the book, When Christ Comes and Comes Again. He says, this is why the birth of Jesus was heralded with such sublime joy among men and angels. For now that God is with us, the whole situation in heaven and earth is entirely altered, and all things are made new. Now that God is actually with us and of us, everything else is assured. Whatever may happen in the future, God's purposes of love and fellowship and peace with man will all be fulfilled. If God is with us, there is nothing that can prevail against us. If God has given us his own son in the birth of Jesus, then he has already given us everything. And there is nothing that he will withhold from us. 
No wonder that the whole host of heaven burst out in praise as the good tidings were announced to the shepherds. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. No wonder Simeon said when he took the baby Jesus in his arms, Now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation. There is so much hope, and there is so much rejoicing, and so much to praise him for as we understand who he is as Emmanuel. And I pray that as we celebrate this Advent season and move into the season, we remember, we remember the manner in which he decided to come to us, the manner in which he found fitting to be our Emmanuel, to be our God with us and for us and of us. That, that we would allow God to take us to the depths of what that means, that we would allow him to rewrite those, those moments of our lives, to rewrite those narratives where we thought that we were alone, that we would allow him to give us the assurance that Paul had, the assurance that David had, that there is not a thing in this world that can separate us. I pray that we would allow him to bring us to understand that nothing can change who he is, and who he is is with us, and that I pray that we would allow him to give us the assurance that Paul says, who can be against us? That we will grow in the assurance that nothing can destroy us, even though it might shake us, even though it might break us a little bit. Nothing will destroy us. Because the Creator, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings is with us. That it is true what they say, that he's closer than our breaths, and closer than our skin, and more near than our thoughts, and that he's not far off. off. So that's my prayer as we move into the Advent season. That we would move into the season seeking to know Jesus, whose name is Emmanuel, and that we would come to know as true the promise that he gave to his disciples at the end of the Great Commission that we read at the end of Matthew when he says, And behold, I'm with you always to the end of the age. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we come before you in awe of you. We come before you acknowledging that we don't we don't always know the depths of what it means that you're with us. But we come before you asking you to show us more. Show us more, Jesus. Bring us to the, the depths of what it means that you're with us. What it means that you are Emmanuel. God, I pray that you would rewrite our histories. That we would see all those broken moments in our lives as moments that you were by our side. That we would see all the brokenness in, in the world and know that you are in the midst of it, bringing great hope. That where we feel like there's no hope, hope himself exists. Lord Jesus, we, we come before you giving you permission to just turn our lives upside down as, as we understand you more as Emmanuel. Um, we give you permission to, to tear down the lies that we have believed, um, that you are far off and that you are not near. We pray that your spirit would give us the courage in those moments where we feel like you're far off to turn to you with those thoughts and those sentiments, to find that, that you are more near than we ever could have imagined. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you're Emmanuel, that you are God who is with us, and that it is your good pleasure to be so. We thank you, Jesus, and we praise you, and we love you. It's your wonderful and holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.